Hey, this is a perpetual motor. And I wanted to introduce this dual axial flux motor that uses a PCB stator instead of uh, a bunch of coils to drive it. Um, you know, normally with the motor, you have a bunch of uh, copper wire that you wind up in order to produce the electromagnetic field that you need. But I figured, what happens if you use a PCB? In my last video, I did a... I talked about this a little bit, where I got to test out, you know, what it was like to have a a PCB and you know this is kind of a, a proof of concept just to see if it would work let's see if we can hook that up get ourselves a magnet and let's see what happens if we just make a little bit of contact there Hopefully it's in repulsion. There we go. Now it's in attraction. It just flipped over. So that actually worked. And because that worked, I went ahead and started doing some more work with PCBs. And I ended up building this baby. So this is what's acting as the stator in this motor. So you can see it has six coils and they're labeled 1A through 3A, 1B through 3B. Each set of three is working on a different circuit like in my other motors. One side is, has a traditional Bedini uh, simple schoolgirl circuit that uses a trigger coil to perform the commutation and the other one uses a Bedini recovery circuit to perform, uh, to power it and perform. And it uses a trigger coil to perform the commutation. So here on the back, hopefully this comes out clear, you can see the two trigger coils for the A and the B side. And I didn't know if this was gonna work. It was kind of expensive to, to go out on a limb and figure this out, but uh, it does. It does. Uh, the drawback is that there's not a lot of material there. It's not a lot of coil. So it takes a lot of speed to get the trigger coil to couple with the adjacent power coil. And most people who work with Bedini motors, uh, I've seen... Uh, seem to think that it's the magnetic induction, the coil, uh, the magnet moving across the coil that triggers, or uh, acts as a trigger, that turns the trigger into a commutator, but it's not. It's when the trigger coil and the power coil couple and they start to resonate together. That's when you get the voltage spikes that will open up your, uh, your uh, transistor. So then I had to build the actual frame. To do that, I had to do a lot of ordering from a local vendor that did a laser cutting of acrylic. So basically, uh, like in my other motors, I have a piece like that, a piece like this, And a piece like this. So these two are essentially the same. In this case, it goes on uh, one side uh, because he, this opening here is to allow uh, support for the motor uh, while this is spinning. So this part right here would attach directly to the stator that isn't moving. And then this piece uh, allows the magnets to make a little sandwich that I can fit these stators across. Or the, I'm sorry, the, uh, 
these acrylic pieces across to make the rotor. So uh, fortunately, I, I, I had to use KiCad. I got pretty good at it in order to be able to make that, that coil. Or I'm sorry, KiCad. I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, now, the one problem with this is because there's not a lot of material in the trigger coil, there, uh, it requires a, a high rotational speed to get it started. So I have to spin this thing pretty fast just in order to get it started. And it likes a higher voltage. It doesn't draw a lot of magnetic or a lot of current, um, but it, uh, especially at lower voltages, you know, 12 volts, 8 volts. But uh, once you get it at higher voltages, then it'll it'll pull the current with it. Um, the hard part of, about this, I mean, in addition to just assembling the whole thing or uh, just getting all the pieces, is, is assembling it because I have these magnets in really close proximity, being able to, you know, connect these together was really a challenge without breaking it. And I did break it at one point. Uh, so eventually I, I got a couple of pieces of carbon fiber tube and put it in between and then pull those out in order to uh, get it to come together. see and then let's see so let's run it a few times I'm not going to try and characterize this motor in this video um, and you know show all the voltages and uh, the currents the power draw all that stuff I'll, I'll save that for another video right now I just wanted to demonstrate that it's actually functioning because it took a lot of time and, and effort you know between drawing the PCB coils drawing the the design for the the rotor and the stator and actually designing it and figuring out how to put all this stuff together so that it would uh, so that it would work uh, fortunately I had this this uh, motor driver from a previous uh, motor that I built so let's see if I can get it started with one hand let's disconnect the power here Attach it back to the piece, uh, PWM, pulse width manager, modulator. All right, so we have power. Let's get all this extra stuff out of the way. And let's connect this again. I get this. Yep, got the little LED light in on in there. All right, now, in order to start it, I have to spin it, and then listen for the the commutation. All right, so let's get some power in there. Or well, actually, it doesn't like starting too high. So let's get started. Did I turn it off? There we go. Just leaning forward. <laughs> I'm leaning out of uh, the support a little bit. Uh, maybe I should tilt it. But I don't have anything to tilt it with. So I've got it to be pretty thin. Uh, the, the magnets on this side are about a sixteenth of an inch distance away from the PCB. The PCB itself is about a sixteenth of an inch. And I wanted to get a, a sixteenth of an inch distance between the magnets on the left side of the rotor but every time I did it they would just snap together using the method that I you know I have for attaching the magnets to the system they would just snap together and 
lock the PCB in place, which is bad if the rotor is supposed to be spinning and the PCB is supposed to be staying still. So I just have magnets on the outside, on this left side here. But it is still pretty thin and it's working kind of as I expected it. So we're doing 12 volts with this little four pack of 18650 uh, battery cells. And that's about it. Ultra thin dual axial flux PCB motor. I think this is the first time somebody's done this. I think it's pretty cool. I think the next thing I'll do is try it with multiple rotors or uh, statters. Here I have four pieces screwed together. So theoretically, I should have for the same amount of uh, input power, I should be able to get more of an electromagnetic field and I should probably get more uh, coil coupling which would allow me to start at a uh, lower uh, rotational speed but that's for later I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, perpetualmotor.com uh, signing out you can see more at on our Instagram page at perpetual motor all one word Facebook at facebook.com slash perpetual motor or on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash C slash perpetual motor all right thanks again for watching